Just while um, Nikki's making sure that everybody's in that needs to be in, um, my name's Sarah Giblin. I'm the team leader for the Hunt LLS Ag Extension team and, and on behalf of the team I'd like to thank everyone from, for turning up here today and what a great roll up has been. And thank you so much to Byron and Fiona and all the time, team time all. Um, what a great community, thank you so much. Byron, you may, be, um, you may get a tap on the shoulder. I know after your performance this year coaching the Scone Junior Brumbies under 12s team on how well you did with that, there could be a tap on the shoulder from the Waratahs, but you may also get a tap on the shoulder from um, Hunter Local Land Services. I'm happy to hand over the reins at any time, so thank you. <laughs> um, so the farming forecaster has been a long journey for the Hunter Local Land Services. It started probably back in 2016 with a few probes out west of, of Merriwar um, coming off the back of the idea of what was happening with this uh, soil moisture network down on the Monero farming systems and also um, with the table end farming system supported by the Southeast LLS. Um, so since then, the, the farming forecaster has platform, has grown momentum with the Southeast LLS onboarded with the Hunter LLS have now have 18 probes across the Hunter and Manning Great Lakes catchment. And soon to be joined by the Central Tablelands LLS with some of their onboarding, some of their probes over to Western Australia and also down into Tasmania. So it's starting to pick up momentum. Um, and it's effectively what it is. We have soil moisture probes in dry land active grazing systems. So the probes are in active grazing systems where the roots are. You will see a probe in a paddock with a fence around it. That's just to protect that, monitor the solar panel. And we know how um, inquisitive livestock can be at rubbing up against things. Um, so down in the southeast, they started bringing in the grass grow pasture modelling program to help landholders model some of the pastures that are actively at those um, grazing sites to be able to forecast projections of how much feed they're going to be growing with that much moisture that time of the year and with the season variable with trends in seasons to help landholders forecast. Now it's it's just a guide, it's a tool, as we've spoken about tools today, it's another tool for your toolbox to help you make the decisions. Um, so we'll keep going. Hunter LLS would not have been able to achieve getting these probes in the ground if it wasn't for our local um, beef groups, the Upper Hunter Sustainable Farming Group, Singleton Beef and Land, uh, Dungog Gloucester Beef and Land, uh, Mid Coast Dairy Development Group and Glencore and Mac Energy. And it's also the last uploading of... Um, the grass grow modelling system has been funded through the Future Drought Fund, which is the paddock between the ears project. The, you, can, you can access the farming forecaster on your laptop, Oops. but it also, you can access it as an app on your phone. So whether on Safari or whatever search engine you're using on your phone, uh, type in farming forecaster, this little icon will come up. Um, and then press this little button down here and it will turn up as an app on your phone. It's the data is fed in every 15 minutes. I will flag that we current, we're ongoing having an issue with our rain buckets for recording accurate rainfall, but we all have our own rain gauges. So that's something we can measure. But the, in regards to the soil moisture, that's something that we can't measure. Um, so when you go on to the forecasting site, we have a drop down box and you'll be able to see all the probe locations across the Hunter. It's, we have an up to date weather forecast system for the seven, seven days generated by CSIRO. And then we have the information of what the probes are doing at that 10 centimetre, 20 centimetre, 40 centimetre and 60 centimetres. The probes go down to a metre, so if we need to put on up to a metre for some of those big perennial pastures, we can. 
but at the moment that's where most of our production is coming from, so that's why we've just gone for the 10 to 60 centimetres. We also have rainfall since nine, um, and our soil temperatures... Ooh. Nikki? Thank you. Um, and the soil temperatures, which are fairly critical in working out when are our pastures going to fire up, in when are we going to start to really grow some feed. Um, and that's been interesting this year because we were a bit slow in get going in, in growing some of our feed and that was purely driven by our soil temperatures and also cloud cover. Um, so it's, it's a good bit of an insight to, to see what happens, what's happening in that area. 13 of our probes, well our newer probes, because I was fortunate enough to get a little bit more money, um, all have weather stations. So we have our ambient temperatures, our humidities, every 15 minutes these are uploaded, and the delta T's, I know we're talking about in regen format, so I won't go into a delta T at the moment, for, but for all your spraying, you probably will be required to write down a delta T, and it's there for you. You'll be able to see up there that when that's when your probe that information was updated so you can see whether it's live or not if it is in red generally there is a bit of an issue sometimes with cloud cover and we all live in the hunter and we all know what reception can be like so it can be pretty dodgy now and again um, i think we've missed one but on the saw probe information, we're all sitting at 100% at the moment. That all, that's a traffic light system. So if your probe is 75% and up full, it'll be green. If it's between 75% and 25%, it'll be amber or orange. And if it's below 25%, it'll be red. Now, when it gets to naught, that's not saying that there isn't any more moisture in your profile. That's saying that there isn't any more moisture there to grow any more green leaf on your plant. If you would like more, so obviously within a soil profile, our water holding capacity, and that's how, regarding how big your bucket is, how much moisture your soil can hold, inherently hold, is different between soil types. So a big clay system, you might be able to hold a 44 gallon drum worth of moisture, but on a sandy soil, you may only be able to hold a 20 litre bucket. So it's about how you manage that bucket. So when, please, when you go onto these sites, go to the more probe detail, and you'll get a bit of a rundown. This is for time all, which is just up here, um, of what the soil is. We'll go scroll down here further. Um, what type of pasture system that it's running, whether it's a native pasture system or an improved pasture system. A lot of the pasture systems where the probes are in the Upper Hunter are on a native improved or regen type pasture system like we have here at Tymore, or it's in an improved, they're not run down pasture systems. I can say over on the coast it's more intensive especially being supported by the mid coast dairy development group so a lot of those are kike rye intensive pasture systems or dry dry lamb so there's no pivots running over them um, so when we scroll down underneath these um sites and tim you took my analogy when you said the fuel tank <laughs> i was like so and this is what i get this is what i talk about with um with how big is your bucket size, you may have picked up, I come from a cropping background, talking about buckets, and I spent a lot of time at Walgett where we need to manage our, wa our water. Not at the moment, but in a general year at Walgett, you need to manage water and ground cover is essential. So, um, so we're talking about how big is your fuel tank? And yes, at the moment, we're all sitting at 100%. But back in February, March this year, we come off a big summer. So we had our big pasture sitting in phase two, phase three. To grow that much feed, we need some big pumps drawing moisture up to grow the plant. 
And yes, we need the nutrition and the root system to go with it, but we need the moisture to grow up. To part, to, um, we need the mo pumps to support the pasture system. So you could see big evaporative days, big bulk of feed, and we started to decline in that, in that moisture. For us at the LLS and for you as a grazier, if you're feed budgeting, we were starting to think, hmm, we may start to hit a wall soon where we're going to see a decline in animal weight gain because the quality is declining and we don't have the moisture to generate more green leaf farrier or get our other pastures up and going. Fortunately for us, it rained and we didn't have that issue, but that was just a bit of an indicator that we might need to start to change the way we do things or adjust our feed budget. Is where we want to... Do, does our property now have the ability to put that 100 kilos on, on those animals in the paddock? Do we need to start to change, change things up? So that it's just a tool for you to work out and project with your feed budgeting and seeing we're all good at looking across the paddock, but what's happening underneath it? There's no use having an ambition to drive from here to Cobar thinking you've got a full tank of fuel and not getting there because you didn't have the fuel to get there. Um, as I mentioned, it's got rainfall figures there. We are having issues, but the trends are the same with it. Uh, we compare soil moisture over the years. So we can see in 2019, um, yeah, it was dry. It was, and you can see how we've progressed up, and this is under a Byron Regenerative Ag system, and there are a few issues with this probe, but it's telling the story that probably needs to tell. Um, that yeah, we've gone up and down. And you can see it's a summer, like things are firing up in the summer. That's when we're using most of our moisture. We have rainfall charts for them. It's temperature and humidity and wind, that has a lot of ha how much we're losing in transpiration rates from our plants. So if we're getting those hot, windy days, you know yourself, you dry out really quickly. So you can see here we'll start to lose um, moisture of our plants. Soil temperature is critical for seed germination and pasture growth. So if we're thinking about going and putting some of these multi-species in, no matter how much you pay for the seed, it's still a cost. So when we put it in, we need to make sure that we've put it in the optimal conditions for it to get up and germinate. And as a seedling, outcompete those other plants. We can, so this is what I was talking about here. At the moment, we're set up perfectly. We've got a rising soil temperature. I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but here's the data to help support your decisions. Rising soil temperature, everything's firing up, our bugs are firing up, and we've got a big bucket of water. So now that we know that, and we're starting out our journey with a full tank of fuel, fresh tyres, and we're ready to go, the kids are settled, we're good. <laughs> but it's only a matter of time before they say, we can monitor from here for the, when we get the question of how far have we got to go. So we can just check in, keep checking in. At Hunter LLS, we'll be keeping an eye on this for you as well across the district. We often go out and take, we have t just recently taken some pasture quality samples to give you a bit of an idea of what the pasture quality, quality is like in these, in these systems. So you can help with that in whether this pasture is good enough for our cows to go in, do they need to go in, or can we get a bit of growth out of this? Um, scrolling down, here's the, so that's the probe at Time All. So the probe is actually sitting out in the paddock where the cows are going across, not in that fence area. Uh, we've taken some soil profiles for you so you can see what sort of soil type it is, and vegetation, landscape, and so forth. So make sure that if you try to compare your Granny Smiths with your Granny Smiths, not a Granny Smith with an orange, because it'll be different. Um, on the weather front, so if you click where it down the bottom it says more weather forecast, uh, we can get a more in depth outlook of what's happening for our planning and also hourly. So you can get a bit more of an update of what's happening when, it, when those storms start to go and tip. I mean, we can all access if information on... There's that much weather data out there at the moment. It's not funny. But this is just 
and I am aware that I stand up here and you're like, oh, not another app, because <laughs> we're all getting a little bit apped out, but this is, hopefully, it'd be an app that you're going to be using to help you support your decisions. Um, so what's coming? So obviously we couldn't use the pasture data sets that they had down in the grass grow system for all the pastures down at, in the Monaro and Tablelands farming. So we've currently, over the last two years, been working with CSIRO and DPI to get their pasture data sets for um, pastures, pastures within our area from um, Tamworth over to the coast. We've been running lots and lots of models to be able to give you some of these projections. So that currently at Braidwood, as of yesterday, under this pasture system, which should, when you look it up, you'll be able to see what type of pasture it is, their currently growth rate is sitting at 40 kilos per hectare per day of growth. Um, so we're trending along, so you can see where you're trending. So in good seasons, you're going to continue up here in this green, and potentially if, the, if it stops raining, we might start to plummet. Um, so we've got growth rate um, currently tracking in the top 25%. So you'll be able to be given these, these scenarios. Plant available soil moisture. Now this is where I'd sort of put my Walgut cropping hat on because this was <laughs> a big one for us. Um, so it's, it gives you, out from all the models, it's telling you how much of the moisture is available to your plants. And as you can see down here, it's well and above what is normally the average and then it gives you the summary down the side there. Ground cover, the key to production. And it's a big thing and I know that the MLA have started doing some work about ground cover and, and state projections and even Australian projections of ground cover. We'd all like to be always sitting in that 70% and above in ground cover. Um, and 100, 100%. I would say 70 because sometimes of our black soils you do, it does sort of open up a bit, but 70% and above. I'll meet you there. Um, <laughs> so um, this is giving us an indication of how we are tracking with our ground cover under that type of farming system. So obviously, if you're at Tim's place and we're modelling his farming system, he's always going to be sitting at 99.9%. .9%. So that's just giving, under your management practices and under the, under the um, typical rainfall that we're getting and the projected rainfall, this is where we're tracking. So that's what's happening in the Hunter LLS space in regards to the farming forecaster and, and providing you, doing our best to provide you with a, with a tool to help you make your decisions. Because we should, what we should be able to predict is when this moisture is cutting out, that depending on the season and, and your carrying capacity, that you're going to start, if these, if these probes start to cut out of moisture, in three or four weeks you're going to start to see a decline in weight gain in livestock under your current grazing. So hopefully we can get you starting to think about where am I going to move these cattle and be the first one to take advantage of those prices where they're high before everyone else goes, oh, Christ, those cattle drop condition. I better call the carrier and get them into the market when every, every other person is in there. So watch this space. There's more to come. Don't overthink it. If my word of advice at the moment is just look at how much fuel you have in your tank to grow grass. Thank you.